Here's an example. Let's say that we have a clay layer. The top of the layer is the ground surface. The layer is saturated. Below the layer lies a well-graded sand. The layer has a unit weight uh, of soil when it's dry of 18 and saturated 20 kilonewton per meter cubed. Obviously it's saturated so this is the unit weight of the soil, 20. The coefficient of consolidation is 0 0.02 meters squared per day. Okay, And we're going to place a fill on top of the ground surface that has a height of 3 meters and its unit weight that is of the soil that makes it is 15 kilonewton per meter cubed. Let's say that the fill is sandy. And the question is, what is the effective stress at point A, vertical effective stress, 50 days after placement of the fill? To solve this problem, we write out the equation for effective stress. Effective stress point A, 50, is equal to the total stress minus U. Point A at 50, point A at 50. The total stress at point A at 50 is equal to the total stress at point A at time equals zero, that is before the fill is placed, plus the fill, and the pore pressure at point A at time equal 50 is the excess pore pressure at point A at time equal 50, plus the hydrostatic pore pressure at point A at time equal 50. Total stress at time equals zero, no fill. Here's the point. What is this distance? 2.4 meters. 2.4 times the unit weight of saturated soil is the stress, total stress. Delta sigma, 3 times 15, 45 kPa. Excess pore pressure at point A at time equals 50 days is what we're looking for in this problem actually so that we can get this right that's the question and so we're going to be doing that using the chart with isochrons but in any case this is the value that we're looking for right now and that is the hydrostatic pore pressure at time equal 50 at point a right 50 days so at 50 days after fill placement it is assumed that the water table is still at the same location right and so that distance is 2.4 meters. That is the hydrostatic uh, pressure head. That multiplied by, let's say, 10 kilonewton per meter cubed for water is the hydrostatic pore pressure at point A time equal 50 days. So now the question is how do we get this? We have to use the isochrons chart, this one right here. To do so, we have to list all the parameters that are present in the chart. ZDR, HDR, these two make up the y-axis. The x-axis is made by UE, in this case at point A, 50 days, and delta sigma, x-axis. And then the internal axis has the dimensionless time, capital T, which is CV times T, divided by HDR squared. So all these parameters here are the ones that are involved in the chart. ZDR, the distance from the point to the nearest drainage boundary. If this is a sandy fill, this is a drainage boundary, and this is sand, so this is also a drainage boundary. The nearest one to point A is this one down here, which is 1.6 meters away. So ZDR is 1.6 meters. HDR, longest drainage path. What's the worst place to be if you want to get out and your water molecule? For this problem, the middle. Because you would want to, or have to, swim all the way up or all the way down from the center. HDR is 2, half of the layer thickness, 2 meters. The excess pore pressure at time equal 50 at point A is essentially what we are going to be getting with the use of the chart. Delta sigma is 45, 3 times 15. We already know that. C sub V is given. It's a soil parameter provided by the lab. 0 0.02 meters squared per day. The compenetration test can also serve to get an estimate 
measurement, let's say, of this parameter. And the time in question is the one up here, part of the question, 50 days. Y-axis, 1.6 divided by 2, 0.8. The X-axis, we cannot get that, we're going to get it using the chart. And then the internal axis, or the isochrone, capital T, dimensionless time factor axis, is obtained calculating, obviously, the T, which is C sub V, 0.02, times the time, 50, divided by HDR squared, which is 4. Let me write that down so that you're not confused. HDR squared. So the time factor is 0.25. Here's the generic chart. So our value for the y-axis is 0.8. This is 0.5, 0, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 is right here. Right? Now, our value for t which in this chart is called TV, but it's the same, okay, is 0.25. Now, notice what I've done here. This chart comes with isochrones that are already drawn, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, etc., right? 0.25, that is the isochrone for 0.25, is not here. So, as a first-order approximation, we can actually draw, and as I did here with a pencil, where the t equal to 0.25 isochron would be if, if, for example, a computer were to print it, right? And so what I did was I just drew it right here between the 0.2 and the 0.3 ones, okay? So if we extend this uh, y-axis mark for 0.8 down the line up to here, we hit the isochron and now we can capture our value of UE over delta sigma, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. This is about 0 0.54. 0 0.64, sorry. Point six four. This means that UE A50 over delta sigma is, which is 45, is 0.64. And therefore, the excess port pressure at point A at time equal 50 days is equal to 0.64 times 45, which is equal to 28.8 kPa. So now, we can insert that value in here, 28.8, and we calculate our answer, which is 40.2 kPa. We can also ask, for example, what is the degree of consolidation, U, capital U, at point A, at time equal 50 days after field placement. The equation for this is 1 minus the excess port pressure at point A at time equal 50 days divided by delta sigma, which is the load. So this value we calculated to be 28.8. This value is the load, which is 3 times 15, which is 45. And therefore, the degree of consolidation at point A at 50 days after field placement is 0.36, which is 36%. That is the degree of consolidation at a given point at a given time. There is another degree of consolidation, which is also capital U, but is the average degree of consolidation for the layer. This is for the layer. And this is the one that's used to determine the settlement of a layer due to consolidation.